joining KSE's Franchise Management Speaker Series, Management 4124. It includes CEOs, private equity, leaders, bankers, entrepreneurs, and advisors. We are in a classroom on the KSU campus where the cameras only face front and in the top of the ceiling due to student privacy requirements. So it may seem like I am looking down and all by myself. Uh, my name is Jordan Prolick. I'm a professor of man franchise management here at KSU. My non-professor life is, is, is as an independent equity sponsor acquiring businesses, consultant and a senior leader with companies such as McDonald's, Arby's, Home Depot, and more. Today, we are extremely excited to have Bill Kahn. Bill is EVP Managing Director and a member of the leadership team at HBS Executive Search. Bill leads business development, client relations, and operations, as well as C-level searches across all functional areas in the hotel, restaurant, travel, and leisure, and of course, franchise industries. Bill's 15 years of experience in financial services, hospitality-related and franchise business development, and sales management, coupled with 16 years in hospitality executive search, allows him to bring a multi-dimensional approach to his work at HBS. He's a member of the Board of Trustees at the Cliff Valley School and a graduate of, of Skidmore College. Thank you for joining us, Bill. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, Jordan. Good to be here with you. Um, so I'm going to start by uh, asking you, the, by me asking you the first question, but the, the students will pick in, which is share with us a little bit about your personal background and uh, you know, your experience, and then um, uh, then we'll start talking about the company itself. Great. So my personal story, uh, after I graduated from Skidmore, I went into the financial services industry, and I became a stockbroker. And um, I did that. I, I went to work for uh, a friend of my friend of my family's was the attorney for a uh, a company based in New Jersey where I grew up. And um, I went to go work for uh, for this gentleman who was just a, really a few years older than me. I guess I was probably right, 21, 22 at the time. He was probably 25. Um, incredibly, incredibly successful, uh, you know, young entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And um, Stayed there, got my uh, Series 7, Series 63 licenses, um, did that for two years. Um, didn't, I guess, agree with his personal philosophy on, on management and how he treated people. And um, I went out and took some people with me and wound up forming my own company and directly competed uh, with him and uh, went, went through a... Uh, a uh, very costly uh, lawsuit, which in hindsight was, uh, you know, a, a great, great life lesson. Um, and then when was it? Probably in, I'm going to say 1990, uh, kind of got burnt out of, of, of that industry. And that's when I got into the hospitality industry and uh, haven't looked back ever since. That's awesome. So give us a little overview. What is HVS? What is a recruiter? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. So so HVS, uh, those those initials, first of all, HVS was founded by a Cornell Hotel graduate by the name of Steve Rushmore. He's, he's he is a legend in the hotel industry. Um, Steve wrote the playbook when he graduated from Cornell. He established HVS back in 1981. And those initials stood for Hotel Valuation Services. And Steve, as I said, wrote the playbook on how you value a hotel asset. And if you just think about it from right, some common sense, if you're driving by, whether it be a, you know, a Ritz Carlton or a Motel 6, they all have a value, right? There's a piece of real estate, there's land, there's furniture and fixtures and all that equipment inside. And there's a brand name that goes along with it. And there's a value. And Steve, as I said, wrote the playbook on how to do that uh, in the most efficient method. And from there, the business just really exploded. The uh, executive search division was added in 1992. And uh, HVS executive search so we're one of 12 different 
consultative divisions under the greater HVS international umbrella. We've got, uh, I don't know, 36, 37 offices around the world. And um, the executive search, we are hospitality focused while 90% of HVS is just, you know, singularly focused in the hotel industry. We, we are hotel, restaurant, and then the other travel leisure bucket. So we're a little bit more a little bit more diversified, but we are hospitality specific. And in, in what HVS Executive Search does, we are a retained search firm versus a contingency. We can maybe discuss that briefly. Uh, and essentially what it means is, I think the best example to use would be if you had to go and hire an attorney for whatever reason, Right. Some attorneys will say, OK, I'll take your case, but I need a twenty five thousand dollar deposit up front in order for you to get my time. And that's how we work. We get paid a portion of our fee up front for our time. Contingency contingency just means they're getting paid at the end. It's 100 percent performance based. That's how I started my search career. And it was a great platform to get started. Uh, but I, I prefer the uh, the method of being a retained firm. And um, I'd love to talk about the client relations. Besides, I'm going to introduce one of our students, and, and this is our first uh, discussion of, of the third year of doing this. So mm -hmm. one of the things you'll see is you'll hear their voices and not only see the people, but the first person I'm going to talk about or the first question that we have for you. He also fixed the audio, so that's why we're having it today. <laughs> why don't you share the question that you, that, that you shared before? And, and one more thing, just for the people who might be, the, the three people who might be tuning in. Um, questions have been submitted in advance, but then also it's, uh, uh, as people have them, they raise their hand and, and so on, and we go from there. But Bryson, you shared a question in advance. Why don't we start with that one? When you guys take on a new client, how long are you typically working with them? And I'll have the next time to introduce yourself, but it's Bryson. Yeah, so so when we're taking on a new client, um, the the time it takes to start a search until we finish it, and what I mean what I mean by finishing is the day the person signs the offer letter, that generally takes us about three and a half months. Now, clients, you know, come and go. They're not necessarily steady, you know, clients over the years um, because you, you could have one client and they might have one need and they may not need you again for another two years. Now, you could have another client that's a much larger organization. Um, private equity firms are... Um, that's where a lot of our business comes from today, whether it be the hotel or the restaurant industry. And so private equity firms, especially if they're a growing private equity firm, uh, you know, they may have a lot more business. Like as an example, there's a company called Capital Spring that's, you know, very well known in the restaurant industry. They probably have over 7,000 units in their portfolio today of all their various franchise companies, as well as brands that they own outright. And we've had, you know, probably six, maybe six and a half, seven year, you know, run with Capital Spring of consistent business. And um, so as a recruiter, how often are you reached out by candidates versus these types of companies? So candidates will reach out to us on a daily basis. I'll probably get two, three, you know, maybe four or five, you know, per day. Um, some of those are brand new that, you know, I may, may not have ever known before. You know, there are services out there that, you know, send resumes to firms like ours, ours as well. And if it's, you know, it's someone that's in our background that we think, you know, we might be able to place, they have a hospitality background, you know, we'll certainly add that person into our database. You know, if they're not, we'll just, you know, let them know that there's probably, a, a, you know, a firm out there that's better suited to them. 
But uh, yeah, we get we get um, you know inquiries every single day. You know, people are are um, certainly changing jobs at a much more rapid pace than they did, let's say, 20, 30 years ago. Um, so there's just a constant movement. Um, you know, my generation, baby boomers, you know, there's going to be a massive retirement over the next, you know, five to 10 years. So that just also, again, this constant movement of, um, you know, of, of openings, you know, throughout, throughout corporate America, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. And, um, so I, my class is by requirement. In my requirement, it's it's almost entirely seniors. It's really entirely requiring special exceptions. Yeah, um, and they might, you know, again, your focus on the C level, they're not there yet. <laughs> in terms of their lives, and in terms of finding their next, you know, their first position or their next position, should they be using, you know, kind of, you know, recruiters that may focus in that area? What would be the way for them to do that? And then, yeah, that, you know, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, right. Our firm would not be the one we right. We, we would not be working with, you know, recent graduates. Generally speaking, candidates that we're working with, you know, we're very rarely, you know, VP level is, is normally probably as, as junior as we go. Like you said, most of it is in the C-suite. So, you know, I would say we're, we're always probably looking at a minimum of 10 years of, of experience. And, and generally even more. To be honest, um, you know, most, you know, companies are always doing their own recruiting on college campuses. Uh, there probably are recruiters that do work with recent college graduates. I, I'll be honest, I don't know who they are in, in, and if they do exist. Um, you know, again, from my, from where I sit in my experience, you know, I would say for a, a a recent graduate or someone that's that's let's say you know graduating in May, you know, I, I would um, certainly you always want to have a LinkedIn profile, keep an up to date LinkedIn profile with you know an updated uh, you know uh, picture, face shot, headshot, um, and you know make a list of a people that you know, and maybe maybe a lot of those people are going to come through, you know, family connections and friends and so forth. And that's fine. People generally like to help people. And if they can, they will. Makes them feel better. Um, and then the other thing I would always tell people is, you know, really, if, if you have a passion, if you know that, okay, this is what I want to do. I just, I have a passion for X, whatever that might be, then go do as much research as you can in that industry. Find out who the companies, find out who the companies are, who are the players. See if you can find out who some of those executives are. And with Google and all these other, you know, avenues today that certainly didn't exist, uh, you know, 25, 30 years ago, it's uh, certainly a lot easier to go out and find out, you know, who potential hiring managers are. Certainly on their websites, they're always going to have a career page of, you know, uh, positions are looking to fill. So, um, yeah, that would be, I think, general, I think a guideline of advice that I would give. Now I'm gonna add a little bit to that. And we're gonna be talking about this a little bit through the semester. These, a lot of companies wanna hire you. A lot of hiring managers have no interest, meaning they have a lot of things going on in their day. Finding a relationship through a connection makes them say, okay, I'll talk to you. And then you have your 15 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes, if you're lucky, an hour, but probably closer to 15 minutes. Correct. Show what you can do. And that's it. And getting a job is the first full-time job you have. You know, it is not, oh, my first job is this. No, your first job is getting the job. And it is, if you decide, oh, I'm just going to respond to three you know, postings I saw online, you may still get it, but your odds are this versus you want the odds to be that. And we'll talk about that throughout the semester. And yeah. it's exactly right. Please add to it. Yeah, Jordan, no, that's a great, that's a great, great point because um, as you're, if you're not currently employed and you're not roaring about your current employer finding out that you're looking for a new job, 
which obviously recent graduates are don't have to worry about that, cast that net as wide as possible. And you'd be surprised. There are many CEOs that I speak to and they've never really looked for a job before. And then all of a sudden they find they got caught up in some kind of a reorganization. Their company was acquired. And you know now the, the new owner wants to put in, the new ownership group wants to put in their executive team. So now they find themselves find themselves in between an opportunity and they're paralyzed and they don't, they don't know what to do. And uh, I use those exact words. I always tell people, look, when you get up in the morning, your job is now to go out and find yourself a new, a new opportunity. And that's what you have to do. You've got to treat it like a job, you know, put the time in, put the effort in. Like you said, you could reply to three postings and maybe get lucky. But if you reply to 300, it's just, it's a numbers game at that point. You know, it's, it, it truly is. And so I'm going to pivot a little bit and uh, go back to a little bit on the HBS. I'm going to ask Anna, uh, who pre-submitted a question. Can you share it with, with and, and again, please introduce yourself. Um, you never know with a recruiter, you may know your long lost sister and brother's cousin. And uh, <laughs> here's like, oh, did you know? And then suddenly you, you're you his next CEO candidate. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, hi, I'm Anna Roth. And um, when I was looking on the website of HBS, on the homepage, there was um, a few words that kind of caught my attention. And I was hoping maybe uh, that you could expand on it. Uh, in the first paragraph, it says, we are, a comprehensive, we are comprehensive in our solutions, but single-minded in our focus. And I was hoping that you could explain what that single-minded um, word means and why it helps the company succeed. Yeah, so um, and I, you're probably on the HVS International, I say HVS International, the HVS, not the executive search website, but the HVS website overall. Um, yeah, and, and really that, that single focus is, you know, we are a hospitality consulting firm. That's what HVS is. Uh, and, our, and our focus is, right, we are only focused on the hospitality industry. So it's a uh, it's a huge industry, um, but you know we stay we stay in our niche, and we are experts in the industry, and that certainly has you know many benefits um, you know to existing and potential you know new clients. And then Simeon, uh, hey, my name is Simeon. Um, the questions that I always want to ask, uh, like when. We have guest speakers uh, from like successful people and stuff. Is uh, like what kind when they set goals? Like what are the things they prioritize? Uh, like towards their customers as well as like towards their customers and as well as employees. Employees. What do you prioritize in terms of customers? Um, you know, when you say the biggest priority for the future of the company regarding customers and then regarding employees. You know, so my personal philosophy is, right, you, you have to treat everyone, and I mean everyone, with respect, with dignity, and just, you know, treat people the way you would want to be treated. Um, and, you know, whether you're, you know, a, you know, a, 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 you know it's your first day at, at a new job, or you know, it's the CEO or the founder of a company. Everyone should be right treated equal. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but my personal philosophy is to make sure I do that. Um, you know, again, whether I'm speaking to again, right? Uh, you know, you know the class here at Kennesaw State, or I'm speaking to you know the CEO of uh, you know a large, well-known you know hotel or or, or restaurant brand. You know, again, everybody deserves to be treated, you know, equally and and with respect and dignity. Um, and you know, that's that's worked well for me. And then let me hand it off to uh, to to Justin and mm -hmm. take it from there. So um, my name is Justin, and, and as loud as you can, he's having the sound is not somehow getting okay. through. Gotcha. Um, my name is Justin, and my question is, with the diverse amount of hospitality, how do you determine an action plan? Do you tailor each one specifically, or do you use the par parameters and or formulas? 
So wait, I, I so the, you're asking me um, how we tailor a search specifically? Yes. How do you tailor each diverse part of hospitality and create an action plan based off of that? So well, I'll, I'll relate that you know to you know what we're doing in in executive search with HVS um, because I did work for other companies uh, you know in in search in hospitality as well. And so HVS, we have a very defined process um, that we, you know, have developed and we've been refining and will continue to refine and just make better and more efficient, um, you know, as, as the years go by. But um, yeah, we're very, very disciplined in following that process. Um, it works extremely well for us. We see it in the client satisfaction scores that we get. We, we send a survey after every completed search. Not every client completes a survey, but you know those that do, we score extremely, extremely high. We think we're like 95, 96%. So um, yeah, we, we know we do really, really good work. We've got a great reputation. And really the best uh, testament is, you know, repeat business and, and client referrals. The, the class right out of the gate is asking these really smart questions, but they got this dumb head as a teacher. And I'm going to ask you my question. <laughs> What's one of the craziest searches you've ever done? Oof. I think I may be, uh, I may be involved in it. I think I might be involved in it right now. Um, what's the, cra well, I'll tell you this. I'm not going to say it was the craziest. I'm going to actually give you an example of maybe the most fun search I've ever done in my career. And, um, and I don't know if everybody is, uh, you know, born and bred in, 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 in Georgia, but I assume probably, uh, the bulk of the class is, uh, I'm, I am not originally from Georgia, as I think I mentioned, uh, originally from New Jersey, but, um, Probably five years ago, the Atlanta Hawks of the NBA, and if, I don't know if there's any basketball fans in the audience, but the Atlanta Hawks had uh, reached out to us. They were looking for a new chief people officer, and they felt that that person should come from the hospitality industry because while I happen to be a, uh, a big NBA basketball fan, you know, the world has changed and it's really basketballs in some sense secondary. The main point of it is really providing that experience to the guests right at State Farm Arena or whatever arena it might be around the country. And so um, when we were invited to, you know, submit our proposal and kind of right go in and make our pitch, uh, I remember I kept on saying to the uh, the CEO of our company, whose his name is Court Williams, and uh, Court, Court and I have uh, worked together uh, probably 15 years. Jordan knows him very well, um, and he's become a good personal friend as well. And I kept on saying to Court, "Hey, we've got to win this search. I'm a big I'm a big basketball fan, and I live in Atlanta. You know, we need to win this. We need to win this." And uh, it was funny because the morning we were going to their offices there had been a snow, a little dusting of snow the night before. And as everybody knows, if there's any white stuff on the ground, the city just, or I say the city, right? The state pretty much shuts down. Um, we wound up going to the offices anyhow, a couple of their executives showed up. Uh, the CEO and some of the other uh, executives just, you know, wound up uh, doing it by, um, you know, by conference call. And uh, we we were, awarded the business, uh, made a very successful placement in, you know, probably again, that 90 day time frame. And halfway through the search, they were so pleased with our process, they wound up giving us a second search. And so not only do we place the chief people officer, but we also place their um, SVP of facilities for State Farm, who, you know, pretty much runs the arena. So it's, uh, it's a great little source for me if I need tickets. <laughs> No, that's awesome. And 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 if they need a new GM, I don't even know the GM is. <laughs> feel free to reach out. I know yeah. I, I, I'm happy to take it. There you um, go. Scott, I asked the craziest one. Why don't you share your question?
my question to you is, uh, what is the most challenging problem that your client has asked you to solve and how did you solve it? What was the most challenging question your client asked you to solve and how did you solve it? The most challenging. Um, it's a good, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. You know, I'd say the most challenging situation question, let's say for us is, we have a very good pulse on the, I say on the industry in terms of where salary, where wages are today, right? Because we are making placements in the present time. So I don't need to, you know, have a compensation consultant tell me, hey, this is what a, uh, a chief financial officer should be making, or this is what a chief operating officer should be making. I know because I've been placing those people over you know, many, many years. So we have that data you know, very fresh. The problem becomes when you know, we always try to, right? We're, we're consultants, so we're advisors. And our job is to go and advise our client. Again, no different, right, than an attorney would. Um, and, you know, like, like, like all things and all people in life, you know, not everybody listens. And so, you know, sometimes we will have clients and they'll say, you know, I can only, I'm only willing to pay X for this position. And we'll say, okay, well, you know, you're going to have to settle. If you want, you know, an A player, they're making X. And if you're only willing to pay Y, you know, you, you very well may not get that A player. And so that becomes, you know, sometimes uh, where, you know, we might be butting heads, um, you know, with clients. And that can, those can be difficult conversations, but, you know, they're necessary. And, uh, you know, we always try to have those on the very first call. So, you know, we kind of lay the, uh, you know, the rules of the game, so to speak. And then the other thing, and, you know, right, COVID changed the world dramatically. And while, let's say, you know, when I was growing up, and I'm sure it's the same for Jordan, right, there was no such thing as working remote. You went into an office five days a week. That was it. There was just never, never a thought. In a suit. What's that? In a suit. Yeah, suit exactly. and tie. <laughs> right. I forgot about that. That's true. A suit and tie. <laughs> Um, boy, have times changed. And so, uh, you know, that becomes sometimes, and, and while the, you know, um, corporate America has certainly adapted and they've changed, you know, there are still those clients that, you know, maybe they're still a little bit old school and they say, no, you know, I need this person in the office five days a week. And again, you know, they're like everything in life, right? There's going to be a compromise. So, um, you know, those become the, uh, those are the tough conversations. Those are the tough questions, you know, in, in my business. And Riley, let's talk a little bit more on the, the hospitality and franchising. Why don't you, why don't you kick us off from here? Uh, hi, I'm Riley. I just want to know, like, what are some trends that you see shaping the hospitality industry? And how, uh, how does HBS respond to these trends in their consulting services? Yeah, good. That's a great question. So, um, you know, hospitality um, is is only continuing to grow, um, and it's funny because I just saw an article in one of the trade magazines yesterday talking about the top five cities. You know, and this was this was specifically hotels, not the restaurant side. And Atlanta actually was number one in terms of uh, you know hotel development and hotel growth. So that, that was interesting. But um, so between all those different practices within HVS, right? I mentioned earlier, we have 12 different consultative practices, you know, under the greater HVS umbrella. And so we're all, we're all sharing one database globally. So, and again, while my focus is on, you know, the people side of the business and, you know, placing executives, you know, within these uh, organizations within, you know, for our clients, um, you know, we have, you know, we're able to share and, uh, you know, get a lot of data from our other, uh, 
you know, practices and colleagues, you know, around the globe. And so that just becomes a very, very helpful tool. And um, again, HVS in the hotel industry specifically is such a well-known brand name that just like everybody knows Google, everybody knows Amazon, everybody knows Starbucks, it is lit it's, it's that well-known in the hotel industry specifically. Not definitely, not not nearly as much on the restaurant side, and we're certainly trying to change that from our division. But in the hotel, in the hotel industry, HVS is a major, major powerhouse. Everybody has heard of it. They probably have used the consulting service, the evaluation service, at one time, you know, to evaluate the uh, their assets. Um, and so, yeah, it's an incredibly strong brand name globally. And is it different when you work for a franchisor versus a franchisee, some of the larger franchisees? Yeah, so the franchisor, franchisee, right? that's always a uh, an, an interesting um, dynamic and interesting relationship and like everything in life, right? There are, there are good and bad, right? There are pros and cons to both. Um, in the In the hotel side of our practice and half our practice, you know, 50% of our revenue comes out of the hotel side of the business. The other 50% is out of the restaurant industry. That's probably 80, 85% of our total revenue. And then that other 15, 20% is the other travel and leisure buckets. Um, in the hotel industry, we do not, we don't do any work with the brands. The, the, the brands that you all know, the, the Marriott's, the Hilton's, the Hyatt's of the world, they don't, really own any hotels anymore. They become big back office reservation systems and they become, you know, really excellent at marketing all those various brands. And Mary would be the best example. They have so many brands, especially after they made the acquisition of Starwood Hotels. Um, so we work with either, let's say, private equity firms that own those assets or we work also with the hotel management companies. So you might get like, as an example, uh, Blackstone, which is I think the largest private equity firm in the world out of New York. They're also the second largest owner of hotels in the country. So while they own the hotels, they're not equipped to manage the hotels on a day-to-day -day basis. So they would outsource the management to a third party company. And we work with those third party management companies. On the restaurant side, we work with both brands as well as franchisees. So as an example, you know, we could be working, let's say with Domino's Pizza, you know, corporate, you know, based out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, but we could also be working with a large franchisee of Domino's Pizza, and maybe they own 100 or 150 Domino's in their portfolio. So we do both on the restaurant side, but we really haven't done any work with the brands uh, on the hotel side. And then, uh, Julia, why don't you uh, give us some thoughts about the industry itself? Hi, I'm Julia, and I was wondering what you thought the biggest concerns are within the hospitality industry um, that someone aspiring to join should look, uh, look out for. And also, um, looking at the current state of the industry, what are some of the most promising implications to look forward to in the future? Yeah, so um, in terms of, uh, you know, what to maybe watch out for, and, you know, the industry is very healthy. Um, and like, I guess, most most industries, right? If our economy is, is, is doing well, and right now the U.S. economy, for the most part, is doing pretty well. Um, there are definitely some, you know, bigger, uh, you know, issues in our economy in terms of maybe, you know, we, we used to have, uh, you know, we used to have a very strong middle class that seems to have gone away, but that's a whole nother, uh, probably a whole nother subject for us to discuss on a different day. Um, again, you know, last year, you know, with interest rates rising, you know, the industry still, you know, is very, very healthy. And, and I'm sure you guys see it today, right? If you, if you're traveling, if you're just going out to restaurants in your local neighborhoods, 
for the most part, you know, these restaurants are incredibly busy. Um, hotels are incredibly busy. Um, you know, they just recorded, I, uh, one of my colleagues just shared a stat, um, yesterday, you know, they had the highest, you know, highest, you know, average daily rates and occupancy, um, I think on record in, in 2023. So, you know, the industry is healthy. You know, I would say it's those unforeseen, you know, um, events that happen, right? No one ever heard of the word COVID until late February, early March of 2020. And, uh, you know, our our division, you know, we, we're, we're a small division, um, you know, in, in February, we had nine recruiters. By April, we were probably down to four. I mean, we were literally, it was, uh, you know, survival of the fittest at that point. And, uh, you know, Court, the CEO and I, you know, we would have discussions every day. You know, are we going to even have a business next week? Are we going to have a business next month? It really got, you know, that, I say, you know, scary. It really did. But everybody was in the same boat, right? We were all in this un you know, we had never experienced this before. Um, and it was it was interesting. It was the hotel industry that kind of carried us through COVID during 20 and the first half of 21. And then the second half of 21, the restaurant industry just went crazy. And I, yeah, I probably did six, I probably did 18 months worth of business in six months in the second half of 21. You know, I'd never been so busy in my entire you know, professional work career. And so first of all, Bill, I just want to thank you so much for your time today. It's really important that the kids hear from from, from somebody at your point of view. And, and I think you've been uh, incredibly generous with your time and your efforts here. And I, I'd love to end with one last question, which is sure. basically looking at the students at this age, going back in your career, um, what advice would you give to the students here? Yeah. It's a great, great question. What I think probably the, the first thing I would tell you, and I'm pretty sure my parents, I think, instilled this into me. If, and if they did, I'm going to give them credit for it anyhow. Mm -hmm. um, do, and I, I, you probably, you guys have probably heard this already, but do, you know, follow, you know, follow your dreams, follow your heart, do what you have a passion for. Um, you know, it's a long it's a long career you're going to be going into, and it's it's not going to be uh, necessarily maybe it's not going to be easy, right? They call it work for a reason, um, and you're going to have some curveballs and you're going to have some hurdles thrown at you along the way, and uh, you know you're it's it's probably gonna it might take you months or years to reflect back and say wow that was actually a great experience I've almost glad I went through that, that difficult time. Um, but yeah, do what really you have a passion for. Don't focus on the money. I will tell you that right now. Um, I know a, a lot of friends of mine, uh, and I'm not, I'm not picking on Wall Street, but Wall Street seems to be a pretty, you know, easy area in terms of you can go in at a very young age and make a lot of money very early on in your career. Um, I started down that path and I, you know, happy I, uh, you know, got out of it. Not that I'm saying you can't have a very rewarding career on Wall Street because you can, um, but don't chase the money, you know, follow your passion because if you follow your passion, A, you won't even look at it as work You'll because you'll be enjoying doing it every single day. The money will come. I can, I can promise you that the money will absolutely come. But uh, yeah, you know, when we're doing a search, you know, while certainly compensation is always an important part of, you know, maybe why someone is looking to make a change or why we're you know, maybe trying to recruit them away from company A to company B, certainly compensation is, a, is a, an important piece, but it's never the number one thing. There's got to be something that they're not getting at their current opportunity. Maybe they've hit the wall and there's no more room for career growth. Maybe just, you know, there's a new boss that came in and they they just don't see eye to eye anymore. Uh, maybe the company was acquired and now the culture has changed dramatically, right? It's not the same place 
it used to be. So um, yeah, don't change money. But as I say, I think, yeah, follow your passion and um, you got a, you got a great chance of having a really, really happy life. That's a that's great thoughts, Bill. And I can't thank you enough to 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 about having taken the time with us to share it. You've truly made a difference. And uh we thank you and I hope you have a great rest of the evening. And you and I will talk soon, but thanks again. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Very enjoyable. Happy to do it anytime. And uh yeah, look forward to, and good luck to everyone. Absolutely. Be welcome. Thanks, Jordan. Oh, 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 oh,